Ladies and gentlemen, the investiture ceremony for Dr. Mark B. Hahn is about to begin. To maintain the dignity of this ceremony, we ask that you please turn off your cell phones and remain in your seats until its conclusion.
Please rise for the posting of the colors and the singing of the national anthem by Sonia Shaw, KCU, College of Osteopathic Medicine, class of 2017. stripes and bright stars through the perilous fire or the ramparts we watch were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs burst Spangled banner, yet wave for the land of the free, land of the free, and the home of the brave. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the Vice Chair of the Board of Trustees, Dr. John P. Smith. Good afternoon, please be seated. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we'd like to welcome you to this occasion as we celebrate the formal investiture of Dr. Mark B. Hahn into the position of President of Kansas City University of Medicine and Bioscience. In the tradition of our university, I would ask that we observe a moment of silence to honor our troops who are serving in harm's way to defend our freedom here at home. Thank you. The honor of presiding over this investiture of Dr. Hahn should normally be the honor of our esteemed chair of the Board of Trustees, Dr. Marshall Walker. However, due to family circumstances, Dr. Walker is unable to attend today. He does send his best wishes and appreciation to all of our guests for your support and your dedication to our university. During my term on the Board of Trustees, it's been my privilege to work beside Dr. Hahn as a leader at KCUMB. He began his service to the university 
two and a half years ago as the Executive Vice President for Academic Affairs and Dean of the College of Osteopathic Medicine. It was a brief time of serving in that office that the board recognized his truly outstanding leadership capabilities, and following a national search, we appointed him as our 14th president in July of 2013. Dr. Hahn possesses all of the traits necessary for a university president to lead an institution to success. He has strong character and integrity. He has compassion for the students, faculty, and staff. He has a desire to collaborate and a fervent pursuit of excellence. I know I speak in, on behalf of the entire Board of Trustees when I say that indeed we did choose the right person for the job. Today this university is proud that so many of you have come together to share this important and traditional right of official investiture and to show your support for Dr. Hahn and our guest. Although this ceremony is usually held during the president's first year, Dr. Hahn's desire was to wait until we had an opportunity to position this university for exciting changes. And as we begin our second 100 years in 2016. At this time, I would like to invite Father Thomas Curran, president of Rockhurst University, to come forward and deliver the invocation. We pause for a moment to remind ourselves that we are always in the presence of God. And to pray, good and generous God, we ask you to send forth your spirit upon these proceedings. Be with us for the investiture of Dr. Mark Hahn as the 14th president of Kansas City University of Medicine and Biosciences. The scriptures speak of being anointed to assist in the work and creation of God the labor of justice, the art of healing, and the opportunity to make people whole. Today we anoint Dr. Hahn with the oil of leadership and place upon him the mantle of service. May he be tireless in creating an academy with an unrestricted desire to know. May he empower the Kansas City University of Medicine and Biosciences community to educate inform physicians as companions on the journey to fullness in body and soul. Equip him with wisdom to create a vision, prudence to lead, and patience with the process and himself. Most of all, we pray that this ceremony unveil a new dawn for the Kansas City University of Medicine and Biosciences, that Dr. Mark Hahn, as its servant leader and model of physician companion, Bless his efforts to form a community, region, and world that is more just, loving, and humble in your presence. We make this prayer. Amen. Thank you, Father Karn. There are many individuals who have accompanied and guided Dr. Hahn on this journey to this place of leadership. Today, we welcome individuals who have particularly inspired and mentored him throughout his career. They have come to share their greetings and affirm his position as physician, educator, and leader. This afternoon, special greetings are presented by Dr. Julian F. Beback, a senior associate dean for faculty affairs emeritus and former chairman of the Department of Anesthesiology at the Pennsylvania State University. Dr. Jean Oliveri, a 1964 graduate of Kansas City University of Medicine and Bioscience and a member of the KCU Board of Trustees, as well as the former president of the American Osteopathic Association. Retired Lieutenant General Ronald R. Blank, DO, the former president of the University of North Texas Health Science Center, as well as the former Surgeon General of the United States Army. Leo Morton, Chancellor of the University of Missouri at Kansas City. The Honorable Sly James, Mayor of Kansas City, Missouri. Dr. Bruce Dubin, Executive Vice President for Academic Affairs, Provost and Dean of the College of Osteopathic Medicine, and Dr. Nathan Hall, an alumnus of Kansas City University of Medicine and Bioscience, as well as a member, the newest member of the board of KCU. Our first greeter is Dr. Julian Beback. He is unable to be with us for today's ceremony, but has provided his personal recorded remarks. 
Good afternoon. This is Julian Bebeck speaking to you from Lancaster, Pennsylvania. It is a privilege for me to recognize some of President Mark Hahn's past achievements and his many talents on this special day, the occasion of his investiture as the 14th president of the Kansas City University of Medicine and Biosciences. In 1995, I was blessed to recruit a future star certain, Dr. Mark Hahn, to lead the Penn, Penn State Pain Medicine and Palliative Care Division of the College of Medicine and the Hershey Medical Center. Recruiting Mark Hahn was a real coup for us, and he went on to do what I knew he could. He became one of our most distinguished faculty graduates. Not only did he immediately demonstrate his superb clinical talents and his innovative approach to medical education, but he also displayed a flair for leadership and administration. His series of lectures, workshops, and clinical education publications soon garnered national attention. Importantly, Dr. Hahn has always shown his vision and grasp of the big picture in the fast-changing world of American medicine and health care. I know of no other colleague who has risen as rapidly and with such determination in the complex leadership ladder of national medical education institutions. Mark Hahn has undeniable talents for the vitally important leadership functions of networking and collaboration. His political skills in drawing together the unique features of allopathic and osteopathic medical disciplines are well known and recognized in Washington, D.C. I am certain that he will continue and expand on these collaborative directions in the future and that these efforts will ultimately be rewarded by improvements in the delivery of the best health care to all our citizens. To some extent, these are innate talents, but Dr. Hahn's tenure in Washington as a Robert Wood Johnson Fellow undoubtedly helped to prepare him for the next levels of national leadership. The contacts and collegial ties he developed during that time will be of great benefit to this university. It is a distinct honor for me to be part of this investiture. Kansas City University is indeed fortunate to have Mark and Robin Hahn as their presidential couple. I convey every good wish for future success to both of them and to the Kansas City University of Medicine and Biosciences. Thank you. Hello. You know, it's sort of interesting. Uh, three hours ago, this hall was empty, uh, a little dark, very quiet. And now it's just full of wonderful excitement for what's to come, austerity of purpose. And for me, a great privilege to be here. It's sort of strange for me to be sandwiched in between two great leaders in our country, a dean emeritus of a major medical school, Pennsylvania State, and the retired Surgeon General of the Army, Dr. Blank. But I will try my best, Mark, to uphold this middle position. Thank you. 
It's a great day because we are sort of at the evening of our 100th anniversaries of the university. And to see this continued growth of not only the potential, but the actualization of quality osteopathic education producing osteopathic physicians to satisfy our country's and society's needs. Given the joy of this investiture, it gives me the chance to tell a success story. I was president-elect of the American Osteopathic Association in 1998-99, and I met Dr. Hahn in April of 1999, a few short 16 years ago. He was at our um, American Osteopathic Association's Federal Health Council meeting sharing his experiences with being an advisor to the Senate and its Committee on Medical Affairs. Here was a Robert Wood Johnson Fellow, an author of a textbook on pain management, a professor of anesthesia at a leading medical school, an allopathic school. And I said to myself, who in the hell is this guy? <laughs> we never heard of him. So I made an arrangement to meet Dr. Hahn in the hall outside of the lecture room, the meeting room, after he gave his presentation and I said to him, and I said, Mark, where have you been? And he said, well, I graduated from Des Moines and I went into the service and I did my training there and, and got involved in allopathic medical education and, and now I'm here in Washington. And, and uh, I mean, he was a guy who was the attending physician to Presidents Reagan and G.W. Bush, 41 and we don't have him in our ranks. And I said to him, why are you not a member of the Osteopathic Association, and why are you not a dean of one of our schools? And he said, well, that would be nice. <laughs> I said, Mark, get your credentials in osteopathic certification and apply as quickly as you can. I did this with uh, a lot of enthusiasm, some purpose, I guess, so to speak. And the rest, as you know, is history. He is, was the dean of three schools, three medical schools in our profession, the University of North Texas, Texas College of Osteopathic Medicine, University of New England, College of Osteopathic Medicine, and recently the dean here at the Kansas City University of Medicine. So today I wish to thank you, Mark, as president of the Kansas City University of Medicine and Biosciences, on this day of your investiture. I wish to thank you very much for being a self-effacing, and humble mentoree, for being a medical education visionary, for being a leader in the future of osteopathic medicine in America and worldwide, and finally, for fulfilling all we recognized in you 13, 16, excuse me, 16 years ago. Congratulations, Mark. I am proud to know you, and I'm certainly happy to have had a chance to be a mentor to you. Thank you.
Well, good afternoon. What a wonderful occasion. And uh, thanks to those who came before me who didn't wear the dreaded cap. I hate it. And uh, so I said, hey, if they're not doing it, neither am I. And then I realized I didn't have to anyway. Uh, so, uh, so I'm not. And uh, I appreciate your comment, Dr. Oliveri, about being the middle, which apparently means I'm a bookend. Is that <laughs> something like that? Well, it's truly a uh, privilege and a pleasure to be here and help in honoring Mark Hahn. And of course, Robin. Let's not forget that Mark and Robin are truly a team. And uh, without her, you would have been pumping gas somewhere, probably. So, uh, Robin, I'm not quite sure. Yeah, there you are. Uh, so, so it's congratulations to both of you. Well, Mark Hahn is a colleague, co-worker. He's my friend. He's something more, too. Uh, in the military, in combat, we have what we call battle buddies. And that's someone that you can always count on to watch your back. You watch theirs, too. And so the time that I've been associated with Mark Hahn, he's always had my back, and I suspect the backs of many of your coworkers, subordinates, and, and friends. Mark and I share that military background. We both trained at Walter Reed, though I left Walter Reed just before he came, and then he left Walter Reed. Uh, we were both residents and staff. Uh, just before I returned there to command the medical center, uh, I wondered if that was, uh, was on purpose. I've never quite figured that out. He claims it was coincidental, but we didn't overlap anyway. Mark then left the Army and went on to uh, uh, clinical practice to uh, success in teaching and academics uh, to the uh, Robert Woods Johnson uh, Foundation uh, Fellowship uh, doing health policy, uh, and he just succeeded in so many ways. Well, I left the Army too, uh, though they kind of had to kick me out after, uh, after 32 years, uh, and was fortunate to uh, go to University of North Texas Health Science Center as president. Uh, shortly after arriving, it became apparent to me that we needed uh, new leadership in the uh, College of Osteopathic Medicine. We needed a new dean, and after a search, uh, Mark was, uh, was the selectee. Now, picture this, after he was selected, and I had met Mark, but uh, here he comes, firstly, first, he's, I don't know, 40, 50 years younger than me, something like that. He's incredibly young. Uh, th that was, uh, well, that was, just, that was just absolutely wonderful. He has all this experience, these accomplishments, uh, Gene, just like you were saying, uh, and that was pretty darn impressive. He comes up driving a Corvette Stingray, <laughs> and he's Army. I said, oh, this is heaven. I just love it. <laughs> it doesn't get any better than this. And so Mark and I started working together, and uh, I watched. I watched him take on the tough problems, all of the issues, identify those, fix them, and then deal with the new ones that popped up. I watched him deal with the, how do I say this, interesting personalities that uh, uh, and those of you in academics kind of have an idea what I mean. I'll say no more about it. Uh, but indeed, they are interesting, and Mark just handled them beautifully. He did a great job in building that program. He did something else. He watched his people's back. He really did. And so what I really observed, besides all the clinical uh, expertise and the teaching excellence, uh, in what he did in administration and management. I watched leadership. And Mark exemplifies leadership. You identify what the goals are and you inspire, you communicate certainly, uh, but you're visible and you lead by example. Not, not what I say, but what I do, and that's what I want you to do. And again, he watched his people's back. This all on a foundation, a basis, of values, and, and to a certain extent, they're Army values, but, but they're values of medicine and, and many other professions, hopefully much of society, too, and it has to do with loyalty, has to do with dedication, has to do with respect. At the end of the day, for those of us, certainly in the military and absolutely in medicine, it's about selfless service. And Mark, you exemplify all of that. It's been my privilege to have worked with you, to see you now all too infrequently, I wish you 
All the best, give you my heartiest congratulations. Thank you very much, well done. Well, General Blank, I decided I would break the mold here and wear this darn thing. Um, I never wear one on campus. I really dislike them, but I said I have to do something special for Mark. All right. So I'm, uh, so good afternoon, everyone. I am, uh, I'm very pleased to extend congratulations from the University of Missouri, Kansas City, to our distinguished colleague, Dr. Mark B. Hahn, on his formal installation as president of the Kansas City University of Medicine and biosciences. You know, in, a, in, a, in just a quick overview of Dr. Hahn's professional history, you would describe him as a caregiver who puts others first. He is clearly concerned about the uninsured and the underinsured, those in pain and those in the final stages of life. And he wants students to have a chance to work and learn alongside the best academic and researchers available. So this investiture marks a, uh, a new era for KCU and the presence of a welcomed partner for UMKC. Now as a leader, Dr. Hahn has already distinguished himself and his institution by agreeing to contribute time and talents with UMKC and KU in the joint search for new drugs and new treatment options. The three area schools have agreed to pursue new explorations and, collaborate and collaborative opportunities in academics and research. You see, we share a goal. And that goal is to give the best possible medical and health care services to our community. Some of you know that we have uh, worked together in the past, and most recently, we hosted a traveling exhibit of women in medicine. Now, another opportunity has presented itself for KCU and UMKC to make lasting contributions to our community and inspire other academics and scientists to do the same. Now, we could have chosen to be competitors, but we chose instead to be colleagues because as partners, we are focused on improving the health of all Kansasidians. One partnership opportunity is translational research, also called Bench to Bedside. Now that holds much promise for patients everywhere. One collaboration unites our medical and research teams to concentrate on specific diseases of muscles and bone. The teamwork may speed up the process of turning discoveries into treatment and provide unique research education opportunities for our students. Well, in closing, I would call your attention to the symbols involved in this ceremony. One, the President's seal, is said to be carried by one who bears responsibility for leadership. Now, this is fitting as an emblem for Mark Hahn. He is a proven leader for his university, a responsible partner with UMKC and KU, and above all, a loyal servant to those in our city who look to us for help and relief. Thank you and congratulations, Mark. Hi, I'm Sly James, the mayor of Kansas City, Missouri. I'm pleased to have the opportunity to formally congratulate Dr. Mark Hahn and officially recognize the tremendous strides he's made since joining the Kansas City University of Medicine and Biosciences as its 14th president. Dr. Hahn assumed the helm at a pivotal time and in just 18 months has been remarkably successful in putting KCU on the map in unprecedented fashion. Through his leadership, insight, and vision for the future, Dr. Hahn is unlocking the great potential for the transformation and growth of this important educational asset we are so fortunate to call our own. It is our city's great advantage that Dr. Hahn takes to heart KCU's mission of improving the well-being of the communities it serves. Under Dr. Hahn's leadership, 
The university not only is graduating record numbers of outstanding doctors and scientists, but also is instilling in them a culture of service and giving back to those in need. Dr. Hahn's strong and compassionate leadership bodes well for Kansas City. Indeed, the extent to which any city can continue to grow and prosper is determined largely by how well it cares for its people. On this most important day, I congratulate Dr. Hahn and thank him for what I know will be many more years of dedicated leadership and meaningful contributions to our community. Dr. Hahn, I bring you greetings and congratulations and welcome from your faculty, your staff, and your student body. When we first met, you helped me realize the importance of what we do as medical educators, the things that are important about the quality of patient care and what we do every time we touch and interface with a patient. And walking around the campus of KCU, I've come to realize that we've got a heck of a group of soldiers and soldiers in training, and I use those words with great particularity. We have an army, and that army's task is to fight a battle every day. In the College of Bioscience, our researchers, we call them our army strategists, are researching the very fabric of the enemy we face, things like cancer, heart disease, tuberculosis, stroke, and our researchers are exploring the fabric of the DNA so they can find the weakness of our enemies. And under your guidance, we're making great progress towards that as our army of researchers comes forward. And that army is training the next group of strategists, the next group of researchers, both on the campus of KCU and with collaboration with great programs like UMKC and KU. Then we have the medical school. I'll describe those as our warriors. The phys physicians every day are fighting that battle they're fighting the battles against heart disease, cancer, but instead of using bullets or dropping bombs, what they're using is their knowledge and medications like anti-cancer drugs and surgery and antibiotics. As they go out, these young warriors and the warriors that we're training to fight those battles every day. And like every great army, there has to be a great leader. And Mark, you're that leader. With your strategy, your foresight, and everybody knows that every army has soldiers who want to tell the leader how to really run the place every day. You manage to walk that minefield as well, and you do it so well. So congratulations on being the leader that you are and reminding us of the importance of our job every day as we chain, train our next group of warriors and as we lead the strategy towards research. Now, I need to remind the audience also that Dr. Mark Hahn is an anesthesiologist. He puts people to sleep. <laughs> now, I have it on great authority. In fact, I know it, that that will not happen today. And in fact, you're going to be very excited about some of the message you, messages you hear. Mark, thank you on behalf of all your students for everything that you do for us and your leadership. Now it is my privilege as the Vice Chair of the Board of Trustees to administer the oath of office of the President. Dr. Hahn, would you please join me on the stage? I've left my hat as well. <laughs> Thank you, sir. You bet. <clears throat> Mark B. Hahn, you are the President of <coughs> Kansas City University of Medicine and Biosciences. With the Office of President, comes great responsibilities to both our university and to our community. In all actions and deeds, you are charged to uphold our bylaws and our mission of improving the well-being of the communities we serve. You're charged with the task of naming able leadership that will carry diligently the responsibilities. You are further charged with demonstrating your commitment to osteopathic medicine and bringing credit to our profession. Dr. Hahn, would you please raise your right hand and repeat after me? 
I hereby swear that I, Mark B. Hahn, I hereby swear that I, Mark B. Hahn, will do all in my power, will do all in my power, to uphold the mission and bylaws of the Kansas City University of Medicine and Bioscience. To uphold the mission and the bylaws of the Kansas City University of Medicine and Biosciences. That I will always act in the best interest of both the university and our students. That I will always act in the best interest of both the university and our students. That I will deal justly, fairly, and impartially in all matters that come before me. That I will deal justly, fairly, and impartially in all matters which come before me. And that I will carry out all the duties of president. And that I will carry out all the duties of president. To the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. This I solemnly pledge. This I solemnly pledge. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my honor now to formally present to you the 14th president of Kansas City University of Medicine and Biosciences, Dr. Mark B. Hahn. Thank you. Thank you. Good job, man. Thank you. Thank you. changes than Katy Perry <laughs> at the Super Bowl. I think. I, I don't like the hat or the gown, so I'm going to put on a suit jacket. Well, thank you all. And again, welcome. You know, this, this is like the uh, old TV show, This Is Your Life. Um, or it's like your funeral. Um, <laughs> and let, let's just wait. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> I'm honored and humbled by the kind words that I've heard today. But more importantly, I'm honored to be part of this dynamic university and this great city at such a pivotal time. This kind of event makes me personally a little uncomfortable. Uh, for really, this shouldn't be about me, but this should be about this great, almost 100-year-old institution. I know also that some folks may, may, may be a little bit confused by this whole investiture ceremony. In fact, uh, one of my brothers called me, he says, you've been president for a year and a half. He says, is this just so you can get a gift? <laughs> <laughs> and you know, one of our finance guys, I see him sitting right back there, he said to me, he said to me, where did you register for this ceremony? <laughs> Well, for all of you, for all of you that haven't gotten me a gift yet, I registered at Halls. Uh, and I'm still waiting for that espresso maker. <sighs> you know, I've been blessed. I've been blessed by having a number of influential people guide and mentor me throughout my career. You know, they've presented me with great opportunities, great opportunities at a time when I might not have been looking for opportunities. And that's what a great mentor is. <clears throat> I can never pay them back. I can never pay back Dr. Beebeck, Dr. Oliveri, Dr. Blank. But I can pay it forward. And as I look back on my career, I spent 13 years as a dean. The best part of being dean was six of my associate deans 
went on to become deans at other medical schools. And that's what I was most proud of uh, about my job. So it's not, it's not paying it forward. It's, it's investing in that next generation, that next generation of physician and scientists. You know, Dr. Biebeck, Dr. Biebeck, he taught me the strong focus on excellence in everything that we do. Um, you think I'm tough, uh, that's where I learned it from. Dr. Biebeck was a tough boss, but a great boss and a fair boss. Dr. Oliveri, Gene, you reinforced in me the sacred obligation that I had for my profession, and I thank you for that, Gene. Thank you. General Blank, Ron, you taught me that the world is gray. Uh, when I met Dr. Blank, everything was black and white to me. Somebody was good, somebody was bad. But that's not how life is. And Dr. Blank taught that to me. So Ron, thank you. Our students, we got students on both sides of the room. You're our reason for being. The focus of every decision that we make is based upon your best interest. You're the next generation of physicians, scientists, and medical ethicists. I'd like to ask our students who are here today to please stand, give them a round of applause, please. <laughs> Thank you. Don't let it get to your head. You got studying tonight, okay? <laughs> our staff, our staff are dedicated to our vision. They inspire innovation each and every day. Our faculty, our faculty are here. Without you, there'd be no university. There'd be no imparting of knowledge. There'd be no next generation of physicians and scientists. So I'd like to take a moment and a round of applause for our faculty as well. <laughs> Excuse me. Leadership team, I've got a great leadership team. As Jim Collins said in his books, Good to Great and Built to Last, the first step on the way from good to great is having the right people on the bus. And I wanna give my gratitude to the President's Cabinet, our leadership team. Thank you. <laughs> I know we have a number of alumni here tonight. Would, would alums mind standing just for a second? I, I wanna thank you. You are the ambassadors of our great profession and of our university. You make a difference. You're what builds our reputation, so thank you. Kansas City academic, civic, and business leaders. Chancellor Morton, thank you so much. Father Tom, um, not only are you a colleague, you're, you're a close friend as well. Uh, thank you both for all you do for our university and this community. Uh, Terry Dunn is here. Brad Vince is here. Both are co-chairs for our centennial campaign. Uh, you know, we're turning 100. I'm not gonna, um, I'm not gonna squeeze you at the door as you, as, as you go out, but we are entering a centennial campaign in the next two months. But thank you both. Our board of trustees, 
uh, each and every one of you oversee and encourage the great transition that's occurring at our university right now. You help us to continue to pursue in excellence in everything we do and improve the well-being of the communities we serve. And also, Dr. Ron Sol Solpitsa, uh, president of Avila University, is, uh, is a good mentor and friend as well. Thank you, board. Round of applause for our board. <clears throat> You know, friends and family, uh, I tell people it's important to strive for a, a good work-life balance. Uh, those are good words to listen to. I don't do a very good job at it. My family and friends are here to support me, and I appreciate that. You know, my father and his wife, Susan, are here. My dad has always been very supportive and, and really has personified resilience and hard work. So thanks, Dad. Thank you. <clears throat> I also want to recognize my brother Michael, his wife Rainey, my brother-in-law Michael Kopman, and his wife Eileen. Thank you for being here. And now them. <laughs> um, everyone's having such a good time there because uh, the photographer said you have to sit on the floor, and, and I just don't sit on the floor. So. <laughs> Um, uh, they, they had a good time. We, uh, we enjoyed that. Brad and Aaron, both are graduate students. Um, Brad is, um, is in the uh, Block School of Management at UMKC. So Leo, he's your problem now. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and Aaron, uh, Aaron is, uh, is at the Rollins School at Emory University in Atlanta, Georgia, studying public health. I'm proud of both of you. I'm proud of both of you for the work that you do every day and for the type of people that you are and for the fact that you keep me humble as well. So kids, thank you so much. All right. <laughs> All right, I'm just gonna sit down now. <laughs> and, and Robin, whose love and devotion has been the biggest source of support, guidance, and encouragement to me. She's been, she's been my number one mentor. And as Ron said, without you, I'd be pumping gas. So <laughs> thank you. And if you'd like, we got autographed copies of this picture, too. <laughs> You know, the theme today dates back to both a gift and a lesson my late mother taught me uh, when I was a very young lad. She gave me this tie tack. In fact, I'm wearing this tie tack, or at least I was before the sound guy hooked me up. Um, this tie tack is actually a working door knocker. And what, it, what the lesson was, my mom told me, that when opportunity knocks, it's important to open the door. And I remember that lesson to this day. You know, as you've heard today from three very important mentors in my career, I've been fortunate. I've been fortunate to have opportunities knock a number of times. Uh, but we're here today not to talk about that but to talk about this tremendous institution and the opportunities that lie ahead for the Kansas City University of Medicine and Biosciences. You know, when a knock comes, the challenge is, and this happens all the time in my office, the challenge is recognizing whether it's an opportunity or just another interruption, <laughs> right? <laughs> But the knock of opportunity is loud, and it is clear for KCU, and we are answering it. Success today and in the future is really possible because of really a, a very strong and robust heritage 
um, a heritage that was founded on the tenets of osteopathic medicine back almost 100 years ago. You know, we were founded in 1916 by Dr. George J. Conley as the Kansas City College of Osteopathy and Surgery. It was the fifth osteopathic medical school in the country. Since founding, we've been proud of calling the Northeast neighborhood our home and proud of a number of firsts. We had the first obstetrical hospital in the city, the first osteopathic hospital on a college campus. And in 1972, we had the first academic medical center in the Midwest that boasted all private rooms and the first helipad in Kansas City. We had a lot of firsts on our campus. You know, right now we stand on the shoulders of giants. And right now that has allowed us to see a great future. A great future for our university, for the colleges that we have within the university, and our great professions. You know, KCU's mission is to improve the well-being of the communities we serve. To bring that statement to life, I'd like to share some important facts, facts about our university, facts that might surprise you. I was surprised, I've been here two and a half years right now, I was surprised to learn a number of these facts. Did you know when we were founded there were five osteopathic medical schools? Today, there are 40 colleges of osteopathic medicine all across the country. There are now 100,000 practicing osteopathic physicians and trainees all across the country. Nearly one in four medical schools in the United States today is an osteopathic medical school. That's how fast this profession has grown. Did you know, did you know that the Kansas City University is the 10th largest medical school in the United States, MD or DO, and it's the largest medical school in Missouri and the states that touch Missouri. And for my family, that's eight. There's eight states that touch Missouri. <laughs> <clears throat> Did you know that the Kansas City University of Medicine and Biosciences is the second leading producer of physicians for the entire state of Missouri and the entire state of Kansas, as well as the metropolitan area. I mean, these were facts that I was unaware of when I came here. I think many of you might be familiar with the fact that as an osteopathic medical school, many of our graduates go into primary care family medicine, general internal medicine, pediatrics, and 60% of our graduates practice in a primary care specialist. And that's at a rate that's probably two to three times the average medical school in the country. In addition, our graduates in Kansas and Missouri, 40% of them practice in rural health profession shortage areas, 40%. And when you look at the state of Missouri, our docs practice in rural underserved areas at a rate that's three to five times that of other medical schools in the state. So many of our graduates are committed to primary care and they're committed to service to the underserved. You know, today, there are more than 8,000 physicians and scientists graduates from Kansas City University. In fact, there is a physician in every single state in the union that's a graduate from KCU and around the world. Last year, I am proud, I am proud to say that we graduated our 10,000th physician. These are unbelievable facts about an unbelievable university. In addition, our operations have a significant economic impact in Kansas City and around the country. Did you know 
that KCU has a $141 million economic impact every single year. Did you know that our operations support 780 jobs around the city, state, and actually around the country? This is something that floored me. The economic impact of the clinical operation of our alumni total almost $12 billion a year. $12 billion every year is added to the U.S. economy because of KCU graduates. Unbelievable. And then take a look at this number. Those alums support 82,000 jobs in the United States. Unbelievable. We're making a difference. We're making a measurable difference. I felt that with everything going on within the university, that KCU needed a new look, a new feel to convey the depth and breadth of our impact and our reach as a medical and health sciences university. Therefore, this year, we've introduced a refresh of our brand, a refresh that honors our heritage but reflects the gravitas of a world-class medical university. Examples of our new brand are all around you. Uh, the program in front of you, uh, the podium over there, our students' uh, new lab coats that I think you got just last week, correct? Uh, the, the new lab coats, and now increasingly around our campus and around the city. This is the new look of KCU, Kansas City University, Kansas City University of Medicine and Biosciences. This new look helps us to tell the bigger story, the story of our strength, of our history, and of our osteopathic roots. We didn't change our name, but now we're emphasizing our city and we're honoring our colleges. At KCU, we're investing in three key areas, three areas that are essential for driving change and advancing our mission. First and foremost, as Chancellor Morton said, we're investing in collaboration. We're working with safety net providers such as Samuel Rogers Health Center, Gopper Trinity Family Care Center, the Kansas City Care Clinic to provide some medical services. We'll be partnering with MRI Global Research Institute in training the next generation of scientists for industry. We've just forged a first of its kind research consortium, as the chancellor said, with UMKC and KU Medical Center with a collaboration that's focused on neuroscience and muscular skeletal research. The purpose is to attract more national research funding to Kansas City. Folks, it's not about competing against one another. It's about partnering, partnering to leverage resources for the overall betterment of the communities that all three medical schools in this city serve. We're also investing in our campus and in our programs. We have new educational facilities and tools to meet the healthcare training needs of the 21st century. We completed a new academic center in 2014. 
renovations are underway for our administration building. And our administration building happens to be the original home of Children's Mercy Hospital, if you didn't know that. Soon, we're going to be breaking ground on a new state-of-the-art center for medical simulation. It's planned to be one of the largest and most sophisticated in the world. And we're investing in programmatic growth. There are new military, global, and rural health tracks in the medical school. We're expanding scientist tracks in the graduate school. All in all, this represents nearly $75 million in investment, investment in state-of-the-art campus infrastructure, infrastructure and programs to improve our educational environment. And this is what it's translated into this year. Last Friday was residency match day for our senior medical students. By close of business on Friday, we had a 100% match of all graduating medical school seniors. Uh, it, was, it was great. <laughs> and Dr. Dubin, you and your team can take a bow for that. That was, that, that was excellent. And there's some great residency uh, opportunities that our students are going to. This year, this year we had more than 6,000 medical school applications to fill a class of 250. That's 24 applications per seat. Uh, I know because I did the math. Um, <laughs> you know, I tell the students I may be your president, but things are so competitive these days I probably couldn't be your classmate. <laughs> our, our graduate school, the College of Biosciences, there was 1,000 applications this year for 100 seats. You know, students are eager for the opportunity to train at KCU. They're eager. Yet regardless of the increased demand, we made a decision this year with the help of our, um, our finance folks and our board of trustees, we chose for the second time in three years to decrease tuition across the board. We're the only private medical school in the United States that can claim that. And we believe, we believe it aligns with our vision of becoming one of the most student-focused medical universities in the country. We're, we're aware of the burden of student debt. And anything we can do to try to reduce it even a little bit makes a difference. And I'm very, very proud of our team that decided to tighten the belt just a little bit for the next year. We're also investing in our neighborhood. In addition to investing in our campus, we're working to improve the Northeast neighborhood. We are an anchor in that part of town. It's us and Samuel Rogers Health Center. We're the anchors in that part of the community. Our students, our staff, and our faculty provide $1 million each and every year in volunteer time and donations to our community. We have great students, we have great faculty, fantastic staff, and they care about our neighborhood. Through our Score One for Health program, our faculty, staff, and students provide health screenings for nearly 15,000 children each and every year. We also engage in various fundraisers, community outreach programs. We sponsor events on our campus that bring people to the Northeast neighborhood. And we operate a community garden which produced nearly 2,000 pounds, that's right, a ton of fruits and vegetables that our folks donated back to our community, 2,000 pounds. I'm very, very proud of our campus. Now, I'm also proud to say that we're working closely with the city, with Mayor James, 
to help the Paseo Gateway return to its original splendor. This is, I actually have a laser here, so I'm gonna use this. This will be the first time I use the laser. This is Independence Avenue, and this is the Paseo. Now this is, you know, we talk about wanting to bring it back to its original splendor. I know that the mayor would rather not see a horse and buggy. He wants to see a streetcar down there. But we're, we're committed to our neighborhood. We're committed to the city. And now, <laughs> all right. Now, folks who are aware of the Northeast neighborhood are aware of the Capri Motel. I'm not going to make any other comments. But I am going to announce this evening that KCU will be purchasing the Capri Motel. Uh, now we're purchasing the Capri Motel not to diversify our revenue stream, <laughs> but to demolish the structure this spring and return it to green space. Oh. I didn't think that Capri would get uh, that, that round of applause, but so be it. You know, we're committed to our city, we're committed to our neighborhood, and the purchase of the Capri is a win, win, win for the city, the Northeast neighborhood, and KCU. And I know that some people it may not be a win for. <laughs> <laughs> but it is a win for the city. We've talked about a lot of interesting things this evening. But that's not enough. It is not enough. We're all painfully aware of the serious physician shortages that are afflicting this country today. And over the next 10 years, that will continue to skyrocket. Estimates, estimates show Physician shortage 10 years from now may be over 100,000. Primary care and rural areas will be hit the hardest. No question about that. No question. At KCU, we're committed to doing our part. We're committed to doing our part in educating the next generation of physicians for our state, for the region, and for the country. That's why I'm proud to announce tonight that the Kansas City University of Medicine and Biosciences has been asked by the local Joplin community to open a new medical school campus in Joplin, Missouri. Kansas City University Joplin campus will be the first new medical school in the state of Missouri in nearly 50 years. I think Leo, UMKC was the, the last new school 44, 45 years ago. So almost 50 years since a new medical school has opened in the state of Missouri. And I'm proud to say that the Kansas City University of Medicine and Biosciences will be opening a full additional campus in Joplin, Missouri. Now this happened because of a lot of hard work and support from the Joplin community. I am proud to announce tonight a pledge from the Joplin community of $30 million to help us develop this campus. 
Thank you. In addition, the Mercy Health System plans to gift their $100 million facility in Joplin to serve as home of this new medical school. This further extends both our core mission and our collaborative approach. This new campus will be transformative. It will be transformative for the Joplin region. It will be transformative for our university and will help to address the needs of rural populations in the heartland. I want to recognize some of the leaders from the Joplin community, leaders who have helped make this possible, many of whom are here with us today. Paula Baker, the CEO of the Freeman Health System, Rudy Farber from Community Bank and Trust, Congressman Billy Long, President Alan Marvel from Missouri Southern State University, Dr. Larry McIntyre from the Freeman Health System, Rob O'Brien from Joplin Chamber of Commerce, Gary Pulsifer, the CEO of the Mercy Hospital Joplin, and Mike Siebert, the mayor of Joplin. I'd like to ask these folks to please stand and a round of applause. Thank you. Thank you. Without their support and leadership, this project would never have taken off the ground. Now, probably people are asking when. When this program opens, and I'll give you the date in a second, when this program opens, this will have a greater than $110 million economic impact to Joplin and the surrounding community. That's significant. And remember, that's a community that's still trying to rebuild from the devastating tornado that occurred in 2011. This will become real in 2017. Uh, Dr. Dubin, I don't know if I told you. 2017, <laughs> 2017, a class of 150 students in Joplin, Missouri. Thank you. Bruce, I haven't put anyone to sleep yet. <laughs> All right. I'm proud to be part of this university at such a pivotal time in our history. Ladies and gentlemen, you've heard a lot. And as the lesson I learned when I was a young boy, opportunity is indeed knocking for the Kansas City University of Medicine and Biosciences. Two years ago, when I was asked to consider becoming the president of the university to help lead this great institution, I realized it was not only a great opportunity for me personally, but we had a great opportunity for this institution to attain even greater heights. But I told our trustees, I'm not a caretaker leader. I'm someone who is driven, and I think that probably many people in this room will agree to that, um, even on the family side there. I'm someone who is driven, driven to build upon prior successes, successes of the Kansas City University of Medicine and Biosciences, driven to further propel the university to the next level. 
I'm someone that wants to drive change, and the university is ready to affect change. For our community, and for the next 100 years, I promise, I promise we will continue to collaborate for the collective good. I promise we will remain true to our heritage and to the foundation of osteopathic medicine, what, what our school was founded on. I promise we will continue to invest judiciously in our people, in our programs, and now our campuses, two campuses, one in Kansas City, one in Joplin, so that we can provide the highest quality education, research, and service. I promise we will continue to improve the well-being of all the communities we serve, from Kansas City to Joplin and beyond. This is KCU. We are a private university with a very public mission. Thank you all for being here. Thank you for your continued advocacy and support. I appreciate the fact that you were part of this ceremony here today. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Hahn, for your visionary message. KCU looks forward to our bright future under your leadership as we enter into our next 100 years. At this time, I would like to invite the following people to the stage. Board of Trustees member Carla Jury, Provost and Dean of the College of Osteopathic Medicine, Dr. Bruce Dubin, Faculty Senate President, Dr. Kevin Hubbard, Staff Senate President, Lisa Cambridge, and the representatives of the student bodies of the College of Osteopathic Medicine and College of Biosciences, Justin Penny, Catherine Kepler, and Coulter Cranston. Go right ahead. Yes, go to the middle. No hat. <laughs> an important and traditional rite of an investiture ceremony is the passing of symbols of leadership. The regalia consisting of a robe and a hood not only identifies the academic degree and field attained, but also the position or tenure of the administrator. The robe displays four chevrons, designating the office of president. The hood displays the official colors of the university, purple and gray. This is the Katy Perry costume change moment. <laughs> And I'm, I'm getting a hat right now. Right. You know, all right, all right. I don't have a speech about the hat. The mace is an ornamental staff carried as a symbol of leadership. In academic processions, the mace bearer precedes the president of the university, both upon entering and leaving a formal ceremony, such as commencement. The seal of the university displays the symbol of our heritage and purpose. The staff of Escalapius represents the profession of osteopathic medicine 
the laurel leaves signify academia, the year of university's founding, 1916, reminds us of our 99-year history in medical and health science education. The chain of office traditionally marks the wearer as the holder of important office. Today, it is our honor to present Dr. Hahn with the KCU chain of office, which bears a medallion struck in silver bearing the university's seal. Thank you. Now it's my honor to invite Dr. Nathan Hall for our closing remarks. Dr. Hall is a 2006 graduate of KCU's College of Bioscience and also a 2010 graduate of the College of Osteopathic Medicine with a dual degree in Doctor of Osteopathic Medicine and a Master's in Business Administration. He is a Pediatric Hematology and Oncology Fellowship at Children's Mercy Hospital in Kansas City, Missouri and currently serves as our newest member of the board of KCU. Dr. Hall. Thank you for the introduction. The year 2016 marks the 100 year anniversary of Kansas City University. Just to give you some perspective how far we have come, here are a few examples of what was happening 100 years ago. Woodrow Wilson was the president of the United States. The First World War, World War was still underway. William Rock, Rock Hill Nelson, one of the visionaries of this great museum, had just passed away. He left his estate to his family, who later combined visions with Mary McAfee Atkins to build this museum in the 1930s. In 1916, the local baseball team was the Kansas City Blues, and there was no professional football team. Henry Perry, the father of Kansas City Barbecue had recently moved into town and began sp selling smoked meats. And unfortunately, for those people at the time, brackets and March Madness had not yet come into existence. <laughs> Additionally, in 1916, 12 osteopathic physicians, both men and women, created Kansas City College of Osteopathy and Surgery. They opened the doors to their class of three students. As you well know, Kansas City College of Osteopathy and Surgery has evolved into a regionally and nationally recognized university that produces well-rounded osteopathic physicians and scientists in the biomedical and bioethics fields. The success of Kansas City University in the next 100 years, I feel, will come from, from four different yet integral entities that are equally important. First, the faculty and staff. These are the individuals who work tirelessly to educate and ensure success of every student that enrolls at our university. Having been taught by them, I can easily say they are some of the best faculty and staff a university could ask for. Second, the students and alumni. There are over, currently over 1,000 students enrolled and over 10,000 medical and biomedical science alumni from, since Kansas City opened its doors in 1916. The students and alumni have a special bond to this school. This is where our roots in the biomedical and biosciences professions started. Kansas City University gave us our education and it gave us the opportunity, opportunity to fulfill our dream of practicing medicine and exploring science. We will strive to give back to the university as much as it has given us. Third, the administration. The administrative team has successfully positioned Kansas City University as one of the top medical schools in the country. They have created a medically and technologically advanced campus that caters to the teaching and producing of well-rounded graduates. Finally, I feel one of the most important keys to the success of our university in the next 100 years is our Kansas City University family. The KCU family reaches beyond the walls of the physical campus and alumni. Everyone sitting in this room is part of our family. In some way, directly or indirectly, each of you has ensured success our university over these past 100 years. 
and will continue to do so in the future. In addition to these four components, there are many changes occurring around the university that will drive our progress, like our new brand, KCU, new leadership, and additionally, new campus. However, I don't see these as changes. I see this as improvements. These dynamic improvements and the drive to be the best have upheld our university for many years and will continue to set our university up for success in the next century. For the medical school, for instance, continues to give students well-rounded education by improving the curriculum and integrating bioethics, business, and law into their daily practice habits. Another exceptional improvement at KCU is the plan to build a new simulation center. The building of this new center reflects Kansas City University's forward thinking and focus on the future success of students. The biomedical science program is the newest, most rapidly growing and improving college at the school. Kansas City University recognizes the importance of research and has taken steps in the, on the campus and in the Kansas City community to position themselves in the heart of the, of the scientific community. The inaugural class of biosciences in 2006 was composed of 17 students. Now, there are 76 students in the Masters of Biomedical Sciences program with plans to expand to over 100 students in the future. The biosciences program is quickly becoming a high profile college like the medical school which will attract and produce great scientists for the Kansas City community. Kansas City University's faculty, staff, and administration have dedicated themselves for an entire century to ensure the success of their students and alumni. I am proud to be a part of the Kansas City University family, and I look forward to all of us growing and improving with the university over the next 100 years. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Hall. We've reached the conclusion of our ceremony. On behalf of the Board of Trustees, I extend our deepest appreciation for being with us this afternoon to honor the 14th president of the Kansas City University of Medicine and Biosciences, Dr. Mark B. Hahn. We invite you to join us for a reception inside the Kirkwood Hall. Ambassadors will be available outside the doors to direct you to that location. Would you now please stand for the benediction and remain standing for the retirement of colors and the recession. Well, Mark, we're just very happy that uh, in all of your Katy Perry moments that there was no wardrobe malfunction. <laughs> In the Jewish tradition, we find the phrase tikkun alom. It means to repair the world. It's a principle of social justice and social action. One might say it's the response to opportunity knocks. As we complete this investiture ceremony, let us go forth charged to repair the world. And as a demonstration of our willingness to be such repairers and restorers, I invite you to respond with tikkun alom after each of these petitions. For the establishment of a healthcare system that is affordable, available, and seeks to make all people whole, we pray. Tikkun Olam. For our Kansas City community and region, may we renew our focus upon the well-being of all of our citizens, we pray. Tikkun Olam that the Kansas City University of Medicine and Biosciences community rally around, continue to rally around its new servant leader, Dr. Mark Hahn, in his efforts to make our good world better, we pray to Kuhn Olum, and that we may recognize that repairing the world can begin with a festive celebration of life and new things. And so we depart from this investiture of Dr. Mark committed to party hardy. We pray to Kuhn Olum. Let us go forth as God's co-creators to repair our world. Amen.